How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, we're gonna be making this cloth animation right here. It's really cool, it's fairly simple, and it'll kind of get you in the weeds of how to do cloth simulations, and it's really fun. So it'll kind of get you used to the interface and how to make cloth simulations, which are super, super fun. Now today's video is sponsored by CoreWeave. CoreWeave is the premier render farm for Blender and Cinema 4D. Concierge Render gives you access to 50,000 GPUs on the CoreWeave cloud. This will really make the final process of rendering really tough renders very, very quick. It's the only render farm I've ever used and it's incredibly easy to use and new users will be getting $5 of credit. You can sign up by hitting the link below and again, new users will be getting $5 of free credit, so check it out. All right, so let's get into how to make this animation. So let's go ahead and clear everything out of your scene and let's do those rings, animate those rings first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here to a curve and get a circle. I'm gonna zoom in here and right over here, your curve settings. I'm gonna go ahead and bring my, re my render. I'm gonna get my resolution preview up to say 64, right there at its max. And then on geometry, let's just go ahead and extrude it something like this, nice and nice and tall. And then let's go here to our modifiers, add modifier, and we're gonna get a solidify. And let's also go ahead and get a bevel. Here on the bevel, you can play with your amount. And what that's gonna do is really give you a nice edge. And I'm say give myself two, two segments should be appropriate for this. So now we have the ring that we wanna use. Let's go ahead and right click, and we're gonna go convert to, convert to mesh. So if you hit tab here, you can see this nicely done. Now we are gonna be dealing with cloth and we're gonna need collisions and stuff. So I wanna make sure that my model is nicely dense with you know even faces. So what I'm gonna do is here in edit mode, I'm gonna go and click the, click the loop cut. And then right down here, I'm just gonna go ahead and click it till I have some nice faces like that. So it looks like a number of cuts of six. And right in here, I'm gonna do the same thing and just type in six and then maybe click one here, one there. And now we have this nice model ready for our cloth to interact with and it's really good. So what we're gonna do now is just go ahead and animate this to look really cool. So first off, I'm gonna click this here. I'm gonna hit Shift D, scale this up to be wide enough for a cloth to kind of interact with the middle there and then do one more Shift D like that. So now we have these kind of rotating pieces Well, we're gonna make them rotate. So let's go ahead and right here in your edit preferences, here on the animation tab, make sure your default interpolation is set to linear. So what we're gonna do here is just go ahead and randomly select different axes to animate. And I'm gonna go ahead and give myself right down here, 150 frames. So that's gonna be the speed we wanna use. And then hovering down here, I'm gonna hit the back arrow to go to zero. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and click and drag here, go to the end, and I'm gonna click and drag here selecting both of them and I'm going to type in 360 and that's going to make sure it's going to loop seamlessly. So now we have this and we probably are going to change this later once we start seeing how the cloth is going to interact with these um, discs, not discs, these whatever you want to call them. So now I'm going to go ahead and click, click this, click this one, go to the very end and on each of them type in 360 just like that. Very cool. And then of course the last one, which is really kind of inconsequential to how the cloth is gonna interact, but we do still wanna make it look cool. So I'm gonna click and drag here, go to the very end, click and drag, 360. And now we have some rings. Now let's go ahead and make these collision objects for our uh, cloth. So right here on this little button here, just click collision collision and collision. And that's all we're really going to need to touch for this. Now we can go ahead and start worrying about our cloth and how we're gonna make this look cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a plane, scale it up just like that. And let's bring it pretty high up. It's gonna, we're gonna to wanna to keep it out of the range of our camera, but we'll worry about that later. Now here, I'm gonna go ahead and hit tab right click, subdivide, and I'm gonna give myself maybe 30 subdivisions so we can start to get this cloth to look good, maybe even 40. Really, it's up to what your computer can handle. All right, now that we have that, I'm gonna go ahead and control A and apply that scale just in case that will affect it, not really sure. So now we can go ahead and turn that into a cloth. Now we can just press play and see what happens. 
as you can see, it's already working kind of. And what you can do is go ahead and add in a subdivision surface. And that's how our cloth is behaving. It looks really, really bad. So this is where we go and start adding um, detail and settings to the cloth to make it look great. So again, go back to your cloth settings. Here in your quality steps, we're gonna maybe bring it up to eight. And then I'm gonna go ahead and press play again. And this will be kind of taxing on your computer, this part, but we're really seeing how the cloth behaves in the grand scheme of the animation. So it's starting to interact with these rings and discs and I wanna make sure it falls before that 150 mark. Okay, so what looks like it's happening is it's starting to kind of grip onto the model. See how it's kind of holding onto it? So I think it's fine. I think we will have enough frames, but we'll see. What we wanna do now is also go here to collisions, bring your quality collisions to three, and then on self collisions, just turn that on. And then I'm gonna press play again. And of course it is gonna take a lot longer to preview that. All right, so here we go. We have it rendered through. Now we can kind of see it. Looks like it does fall off before the 150 frame mark. And that's what we want. We may even need to go ahead and add 160. Okay, so now what we're gonna to wanna to do is bake this because it's starting to work really well. And in fact, this was incredibly easy to do interacting with these. So what I'm gonna do is here are my quality steps, bring it up to 20. It's pretty considerably high, but that's because we're gonna bake this. And baking it is basically gonna run through the whole simulation and you can play it in real time once you're done and it will be render ready. So right here on cache, go ahead and I'm gonna do 160 frames. Make sure you do that, otherwise it's gonna bake 250 frames. We don't even have that. Now let's just go ahead and bake. And you're just gonna let that run through and once my bake is done, I will show you how it looks. All right, so my bake is done. Let's go ahead and press play and see how it behaves. Looks really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and shade smooth. First, I wanna kind of examine this. So I'm gonna sh so go shade smooth, kind of examine to see if there's any red flags popping up in my animation. It looks like everything is behaving really well. I'm gonna go ahead and add a solidify modifier to this to give it some thickness. So that's really all you need to just keep it at default. And then here on the levels viewport, just pop that up so it's really nice. And then let's press play and see how that it behaves. Look how nice that looks. And no red flags are popping up. It leaves the frame just like we want. Of course, now on these rings, there is some animation happening. So we need to just go ahead and pull this keyframe all the way to 160. Otherwise, it, again, it's not going to loop if that keyframe doesn't go all the way to 160. Which of course, that means we need to rebake the cloth sim, so that is a mistake on my part. So let's go ahead, back to the cloth, and rebake it. So right over here, delete bake, and then click bake again. All right, now that we're done, we have our 160 frames baked with everything moving correctly, everything moves around, holds on to it, and lets it go. Now we have a perfect loop, we're done. Cloth simulations that are relatively simple like this are not hard to do. I know cloth is daunting. That's the bigger reason why I uh, chose to do this tutorial. So there you go, <laughs> easy as that. So I'm gonna hit the tilde key, go here to the front. I'm gonna get my camera and I'm gonna hit control alt zero, snap it to view, then I'm gonna hit G and move this down. Now we're gonna start working on our animation, making this look really cool. So what I'm gonna do here in the camera I'm gonna go to the camera settings, give myself 85 millimeter. I'm gonna hit G and middle click and move it out. So there we go. Pops into frame, plays with that cloth, dumps it out. Perfect. All right, and one thing I'd recommend, if you don't like the particular way the cloth is interacting with your discs or whatever, you can actually reanimate it and it'll completely change the way that interacts with the cloth, what grabs what, where does it fold, It'll change everything. So you can have a lot of fun and make variations. Um, so there's some kind of little help there for you if you wanna make it different. Now we can go on to texturing. So for the cloth, I'm gonna hit tab. I'm gonna hit U and click unwrap. That's super important for cloth. Even procedural cloth materials do need to use uh, UVs, otherwise they fall apart. So I'm gonna show you how to use image textures. And if you have real-time materials, I'm gonna show you how to use the materials for that as well. 
So this is called ambientcg.com and it gives you free, I believe CC0 texture. So I'm just gonna type in cloth. So now you have all of these cloth materials to pick from and I'm gonna go ahead and steal this one. I really like the way it looks. And I'm gonna take these 4K JPEGs. All right, so it's gonna give you a zip file. All you'll need to do is go ahead and extract it and it will give you all of your images. So before I show you how to apply those images, I'm gonna show you how to use it if you have real-time materials already. So what you'll do is you'll just bring over, go to real-time materials and select cloth. And then just go here and pick one a cloth that you want. I'm gonna use the knitter and I'm gonna add that. So now you have the knitter here. And if you wanna see it in cycles, this is how it is going to look in cycles here. And you can go down here and change your scale if you'd like. I like to keep my scale fairly large and you can go ahead and change your colors. I'm gonna do orange and a gray. And then if you wanna see how this previews, it's not gonna distort, everything's gonna stay the way you want it to look. And of course, it's gonna look like that in EV and look really, really nice here in cycles. Now, if you wanna grab real-time materials if you haven't gotten it, that is linked in the description. Now I'm gonna show you how to use the image textures. So we're gonna go here to shading and I'm gonna go ahead and delete that material. And we're gonna go here, I'm gonna click new. And right over here, if you have the Node Wrangler add-on installed, it comes with Blender by default. I'm gonna hit Control T. That is gonna give you this right here, image texture and mapping. And what's important is using those UVs. So I'm gonna go ahead and click open. I'm gonna go to desktop and find that cloth. So right here, fabric, and we're gonna to wanna to get the color. So now that we have that, of course that is too huge. So I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag and just make this about, about that size. That looks really nice. And then what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna hit G to move this around. We don't really need that much space. And we're gonna start working on the remainder of this texture. So I'm gonna hit, go ahead and shift D, put that texture here, so put the vector here. And I'm gonna click this number two and I'm gonna go ahead and get the, um, the roughness. And we're gonna go here to non-color because roughness is a black and white. So we'll plug that color into the roughness. So now we have that. Now what's really important is we're gonna get that bump. So let's get the bump node, plug that there. Gonna go ahead, shift D on this image texture. I'm gonna click that number there. Again, always plugging that vector in. And I'm gonna go ahead and get the displacement. In fact, we're just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get the displacement. I prefer to use that. You can use the normal if you'd like and we'll plug that right into the height and give a distance of 0.1 and then bring that strength down a little bit. So now we have a cloth and then if you wanna see how it looks in cycles, of course, it is pretty much always gonna look better in cycles. Really, really nice. Now we have that cloth. So if you wanna check out the animation, this is the cycles preview on our animation. So it looks great. Now let's go ahead and add a basic material here. So I'm gonna click new. I'm gonna make it metallic, make it a little bit darker, and then make it kind of shiny. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click this, holding down shift, click this, click that one as the last one. Control L, link materials. Now we have this whole situation animating the way we want it to animate. It looks really, really nice. So let's go ahead and light the scene and um, wrap this up. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna hit Shift A, I'm gonna get a plane, I'm gonna hit RX90, and then I'm gonna move this pretty far back, something like this. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and scale this plane up to fit this scene. And I'm gonna go about to here so we can see how the lighting is interacting with this here. So let's focus our lighting on this object, and this will just kind of catch our lighting. So let's go ahead and get a light area light, and this is really basic lighting. If you prefer a different setup, this certainly isn't exclusive to like cloth simulations. This is just a basic lighting setup to get you, get you set up to really make this yours. So I'm gonna scale that up, make it a disc, I'm gonna hit zero, and then here on the power, maybe 800. And let's see how that looks in cycles. So I'm gonna go scene world, scene lights. So that looks nice. Here in Eevee, if you wanna actually preview your light movements in Eevee, you can go ahead, scene world, scene lights like that, and then move it back. I'm gonna hit R twice. And then we can go ahead and give it maybe 1500. 
cool. And then we can go ahead and duplicate that light. I'm hitting G and R to rotate. So to make these kind of look nice. And then we're gonna make this lighting look a little contrasty. So I'm just gonna move it around. I'm doing this quickly. So again, if you wanna make do your own idea, everyone has their own style, do whatever works for you. And then let's see how this looks. Looks pretty good, maybe 3000 on that lighting. And then the last thing we need is one light to come this direction. So I'm gonna put it over there. Again, hitting G and then R, hitting R twice to move it around. Maybe over here. I don't want it to be super, super flat, but just enough. There we go. And then make that 5,000 on the lighting. And then what I like to do here, go to here, the camera icon. Okay, I'm gonna give myself 300 samples here. You can denoise it if you'd like. On the light paths, I'm just gonna click and drag and put one for everything. Turn off reflective and refractive. And then right over here on color management, I'm gonna go here to high contrast. And that's really gonna make all the difference here. Here in this plane, the back plane here, I'm gonna give it a new material, make it a little darker so we can add more emphasis onto this. And then back on those color managements, I'm gonna give my exposure high contrast and then bring that gamma down. So let's go ahead and just see how that renders. I, I do, however, wanna take this backlight right here and give it a power of 5,000. And then this light right over here, also 5,000 to make things nice and bright. And then let's go ahead and render this and see how this looks. So there you go. It's a very, very basic lighting setup. In my final render, instead of a flat, white background, I actually put some cubes to kind of play with the background. I'm gonna leave that up to you to kind of make it your own or just make it a black background, put emphasis on the animation. Really, it's whatever you wanna do. Here on the camera icon, I do wanna go ahead and turn on motion blur, really add some more realism and you're done. So, okay, so now that we're done with the animation, I'm gonna show you how to use the concierge render farm to render out this file. So first thing that's really important if you're using HDRIs or image textures, anything external from Blender, you'll need to go here to file, external data, and then pack resources right here. So you'll pack resources. My resources are already packed. Um, and what that's gonna do is open up a file. So for me, it's gonna give you this right here. So this is your file. Now we're gonna go over here to concierge and you can hit the link in the description to set up your account, do all that stuff. And you'll go here to upload files right here on the upload slash uh, launch renders section. So upload files, I'm just gonna go to highlight these and enter. It's gonna upload that to your uh, section. And then right here, get the dot blend file, actions and launch render. And it's gonna analyze your file to see all your settings, your resolution, your, your everything that has to do with the file. All right, now it is analyzed, and now you can go ahead and double check out your settings. I'm using Blender 3.1. It is cycles. I do want it to be in animation. And then frames and resolution, you can see it is seeing that 150 frames, native resolution at 1920 by 1080, 300 samples. Everything looks great. And I'm just going to go ahead and render that. And then it's going to prompt you to go here to the job manager, and we're going to see the progress of our animation. So here we go, it is starting to work. And once we're done, I'll show you how much it cost, how long it took and all of that. All right, so I started the render at 116 and it is now 121. So really, really quick. The average frame duration is about 41 seconds. The final cost was $2.55 for 150 frames. Uh, really, really good. This is super quick and we can go down here and just check out one of these frames to make sure everything looks good. HDRI is in there. This, again, this is my uh, original file, so a little bit different. Um, but we have the HDRI working, no purple, meaning missing things. Everything looks good. And now what you can do is you can go here and download outputs, and that will download a zip file for you to compile uh, in your editor. So there you guys go. That is how you make that animation. I hope you learned some stuff. And again, if you want to use Concierge Render, get that $5 of free credit, hit the link in my bio. And I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.